So, Kipsters will be able to solve profit, sales tax tips, and markup problems. Um, again, just as we did previous day, um, we're going to talk about what some of these things mean, some of the words mean as we see them in the problems. Much different than this previous unit. Um, in this unit, you have to understand the situations and what's going on, which is why we're spending a significant amount of time talking about vocabulary. Obviously, this also means that when you're tested, vocabulary will be a part of the test. A significant part of the test. So, what is a markup? Anybody with some background knowledge, what is a markup? Ricardo? Markup is like a price or something like that. Isaiah, what do you think? Markup is like if you box in the question or underline key points. Okay, so he's thinking about in the context of marking up the problem. We're talking more in the context of consumer math, so we're going to be looking for a different definition based on context here. Michael? Okay. And the markup would be like uh, how much is on sale or something? Like 5% off. Okay, so he's kind of thinking about it in terms of there's something on sale and the price is changing. He's definitely on the right track there. He's a little bit mixed up about how it's changing. Yang? Perfect. Um, so if I combine the two things that were just said, um, it is a change in price. It's the opposite change in price is a discount. A discount changes the price down. A markup changes the price up. So a markup is a change, excuse me, is an increased amount of money added to a price. So the example that Yang gives is Yang says um, the value of something is say five dollars. Yang makes a sandwich, it costs him $5 to make the sandwich, but he goes out on the street and he sells it for $7. So he has marked up the price of this particular sandwich so he can make a profit, which leads us to our next term, profit. Nafisa. Uh, a profit is like when you buy something and then you sell, yeah, basically like Yang said, when you buy something, so the same example for like seven dollars, and Yang made it for five dollars, but he sold it for seven dollars. So his profit would be two dollars. So what I hear Nafisa saying is that it's the amount of money gained by selling an item. And what it's important here is to know that the markup is equal to the profit. And the way we think about that is however much Yang marks up the price is the amount of money that he's going to make. So if he increases the price $2 from how much it cost him to make it, he's going to make $2 profit. If he marks up the price $4 from the price it cost him to make it, then he is going to make $4 of profit. Okay? So, sales tax. Let's talk about sales tax. What is sales tax? Come in. Yeah. 
Yep. So sales tax is extra money. Added to the price. To go to the government. Posey. So, Mr. Posey is saying he's recognizing this as he goes to the store. There's a soda that says it's one dollar, but at the price register he pays a dollar ten or a dollar thirteen or something like that. That's because he's paying sales tax. William. That has nothing to do with sales tax, so we're not going to talk about that today. Okay. You can talk to me about that later if you'd like. All right, and finally, what is a tip? Ooh. Troy. Troy is waiting for your respect. Yep, a percent... of extra money added to the cost of the service for doing a good job. So oftentimes we see these most commonly at restaurants, but also sometimes at hair salons or nail parlors or anything where somebody is performing a service for you. A lot of times you may tip them for doing a good service. And there are suggested norms for a lot of these different things, and the norms may be different in different places. For instance, in Japan, it is not a norm to tip your waitress. They as part of their culture, they expect that they are always going to give good service. So you don't need to tip them extra but their managers pay them more because of that, okay? So in the United States, most restaurants pay their waiters or waitresses a low hourly wage, oftentimes below the minimum wage because it is expected that the diners tip them. So if you aren't tipping your waiter or waitresses, you're actually making sure that they get paid less than minimum wage, okay? which would make it technically illegal. And it's partially your fault. Shh. All right. Troy. In a sense, you're tipping them. That might be the word that they would describe it. But in general, you're giving them a donation for their services. All right. So. What do sales tax tips and markups all have in common? What do sales tax tips and markups all have in common? Come on, what do these all have in common? Yeah, they are all extra amounts. added to the cost of something. Okay, so 
that's why we treat them all the same, and that's why we're going to label all of the problems that we see today under a general label of a markup. They are all prices that are marked up. The amount is added. So solving markup problems is different than solving discount problems, and what can you assume is the difference? Mr. Matlock. Instead of subtracting from the original amount, you add to the original amount. So we're going to look at we're going to look at uh, some of these problems over here today. The first one says a used car salesman buys a car for $3,200 and sells it for a 125% markup. What is his profit? So we see that this is profit. Remember that anytime that we're marking things up, we're going to call it a markup problem. Anytime we're adding to the price, it doesn't really matter what type of problem it really is. Any of these problems sales tax, tips, markups, we're gonna lump them all together into this idea of a markup because all of them add to the price, okay? So, we're looking at this particular problem. Um, I'm gonna answer the question, it says what is his profit? His profit is blank dollars. Now, if I'm thinking about his profit, do I need to know how much he is going to sell the car for? No, not necessarily. I don't have to. As long as I can figure out how much he marks up the price of the car, that's going to be how much money he makes. So in this particular case, we don't actually need to know the final price that he's going to sell the car for, as long as we know what the markup is. So we're going to take the original amount, 3200 and we're going to multiply that times the percentage that he's going to mark up, 125%. Now, for this one, when we're thinking about our benchmarks, because it's greater than 100%, we really only need to do one benchmark, and it's the easiest benchmark, is we know that this markup is going to be greater than the original cost. So our markup should be greater than $3,200. So I'm going to change my percent to a decimal, I'm going to move it two times, and that gives me 1.25. So I've got 3,200 times 1.25, and I'm going to multiply 5 times 0 is 0, 5 times 0 is 0, 5 times 2 is 10, carry the 1, 5 times 3 is 15, plus the 1, 16. 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 3 is 6. 1 times 1 is 0, 1 times 1 is 0, 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 3 is 3. And I'm going to add it all up. 0, 0, 0, 6 plus 4 is 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, plus 6 is 8, plus 2 is 0, carry the 1, and 4. And I have one, two decimal places, so I'm going to move it one, two times. I get 4,000. Now, we said that this was supposed to be greater than 100%, so the markup was supposed to be greater than 3,200. And sure enough, here I see that I got 4,000, which is greater than 4, or excuse me, greater than 3,200. Now what we, this tells us is that if we have a percentage that's greater than 100, that he is more than doubling the price of this item. Okay? He's actually going to sell this item for more than double what he paid for it. But the question is, do I need to know how much he's going to sell it for? 
Keep yes or keep no. Do I need to know how much he's going to sell it for? No. I know that he's increasing the price $4,000. If he's increasing the price $4,000, that's how much money he's going to make. Just like Yang and his sandwich, if Yang increased the price of the sandwich by $2, he was going to make $2 on the deal. If he increased the price by $4, he was going to make $4 on the deal. The salesman is increasing the price $4,000, which means his profit is going to be $4,000 on the deal. Questions? Andrea? When you did the benchmark and you did 100% of the sales, did you find the price down to 100%? 100% of 3,200? 3,200. All of it. Anthony. So what you're basically saying is 4,000 is not the total, but it's the amount being added. Correct. If we wanted to find out the total, we would go ahead and add it to the 3,200. That would give us 7,200. But that's not what we're interested in this problem, since it's only asking us for how much the profit is. Yes, Winta. So does he get 4,000 dollars or he bought the car? He bought the car for... 3200 and he's going to sell it for 4000 extra dollars. <coughs> Michael. Um, <coughs> so, uh, Michael is asking about the benchmarks. Remember, the benchmarks are always based on whatever percentage that you're using. So, for this one, because our percentage that we're using was above 100%, the only one that makes sense is 100%. If it had between 50 and 100%, we would have used 50 and 100. If it would be between 50 and 10, we would have used 50 and 10. If it's below 10, then we just use 10. Okay? Yep. So say, say that somebody put 1,000% extra. So we would put 1,000? We could, if that's one that you know. I don't know that. All right, then it probably wouldn't be worth it. All right, Mr. Posey. So, Mr. Posey is talking about the business of being a used car salesman. I can't say that I know a lot about the business of being a used car salesman. What I can tell you is that they buy things for cheaper and they sell them for more. And a lot of times they do a little bit of work in between, whether it be mechanical or just making it shinier um, to make the price higher. All right. A family goes out to dinner and spends $65 on their meal. If they want to leave a 20% tip, how much is the total cost of the meal? So this question asks us, how much is the total cost of the meal? We see that we're dealing with a tip. Remember, a tip is just a markup problem. It's an amount that's added to the price. So instead of having to remember tip, sales tax, and markups, we're just going to lump them all together as um, problems that we were being asked for. Um, this is what is the total cost of the meal. So the total cost... is blank dollars. Now, as I'm answering that question, I'm thinking to myself, well, this one's asking me for the total cost. It's not asking me just for the amount that I'm gonna add. So that means in this particular problem, I'm gonna box this in knowing that I need to know the final amount. How much am I gonna leave, including the tip? All right? So my original amount of the cost is $65 <laughs> times my markup rate, which is 20%. That's going to tell me how much the markup is or how much the tip is. In this particular case, I need to know more than just that. I'm going to start with my benchmarks over here. 20% is going to be between 10 and 50%. So my 10% is going to be taking my 65, moving the decimal one time. So it's going to be greater than $6.50. And it's going to be less than half of 65, which would be $32.50. So I'm going to now go ahead and do the multiplication, move my decimal one two times. That's going to give me 0.2. 
and I get 13.0, that's just $13. So I know the amount of tip that I'm gonna leave is $13, but the question asked me what the total cost is, so that means I need to take my $65 and the tip that I'm adding to it and add them together. 65 plus 13 be $78. So as I leave, I'm leaving $78 on the table. Questions about this problem? Yes, Mr. Espinosa. The tip is $13, and that's added on to the cost of the meal, $65. All right, last one. Mr. Schaefer buys a snowman costume for $46 and pays 9.5% sales tax. How much does he pay in tax? Okay, so this is a sales tax problem. Um, sales tax is an amount that's added on, so this is just a markup problem. How much does he pay in, oops, how much does he pay in tax? So this is only how, asking how much the sales tax is. He play, he plays, he pays blank dollars in tax. So the question we have to be asking ourselves here is, am I looking for the final amount or am I just looking for the amount of tax? In this case, we're just looking for the amount of tax, just the amount that's going to be added to the price. Tip yes or tip no. Am I going to have to find the final amount that he's going to pay? No. Since I'm just looking for this, I've got my original amount times my markup rate, which is 9.5%. Remember to move the decimal two times. That gives us a place value here, 0 0.095 and 46. And here, since we're less than 10%, we only need to do the one benchmark. It's going to be less than 10%. So we have our $46. 10% would be $4.6. And it's going to be actually really close to that. 9.5% is very close to 10%. So it's going to be less than that. It's going to be really close to $4.60. So I've got $46 times 0 0.095. Zero carry the three would be 33. Zero is four, carry the five. 36 is 41. Now add that together, zero, seven, six. Oop, not six, sorry. Try my addition again there. Four and four. I got $4.47, and I just want to double check my benchmark. It's less than my 10% benchmark, 9.5% is less than 10%, so that makes sense, and it's very close. So he pays $4.47 in tax. Okay. One of the most important things is to make sure that you read the questions and make sure that you know what the questions is asking for you. Some of them are going to be asking you just for the amount of the markup. Some of them are going to be asking you for the total price. All right. So key points for today, please. Mr. Matlock. So I believe he's repeating what I just said, and I believe that was a key point, which is why I reset it. Be sure. You know. If the question. Is asking for the final amount or just the markup. or just the markup. Mr. 
Rosie. Um, can I say something that will make you proud of Twitter? No. Key points. Any other key points? Mr. Matlock. Okay, so another three points is I am not satisfied with our key points, which is why I am still waiting for somebody else to tell me something that is key about our work today relative to perhaps other days' work. Mr. Matlock. <laughs> Okay, use benchmarks to check. Door multiplication. Prozy. Um, make sure that you realize if it's adding money or subtracting money to your total amount. Excellent. And Mr. Posey has added the third and final key point. I'm going to put a star next to this and come down to saying here, um, right next to where we said the difference between markup problems and discount problems. 